see you're blowing up those tires again. <laughs> if you're into cars, you know that car batteries and tires are one of the chief issues with having a rotating stock. Like two car batteries, if you're good at it, two car batteries will attend a fleet of dozens, right? And then the tires, Jamie, you noticed when we start a project, I buy new tires, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's usually a good way to do it. Otherwise, you're ending up with this cracked, dry tires that go flat every 10 minutes. Notice anything different in the shop? There is something, something new. Aha! Well, a friend stopped by today and he's like, dude. I got just what you need. I'm like, how do you know I need it? He's like, because it's free. It's like, good point. What do you got? A Morris Minor pickup truck. I'm just getting my envisioning self on. He was like, yeah. Well, first, a little backstory with Jeff. He uh, had this awesome truck that was customized by both his dad and Bill Hines. It was one of these pickups. They used car doors on it. So this is a truck. They used the, this body style car door, which are longer. So they extended the cab, chopped the top, and after that, all kinds of stuff changed. I first saw the rig at Rich Evans' shop, and there's also a pretty popular video out there. Uh, I'll send you the link, Jamie. You can post it. Um, awesome truck. Typical Hot Wheels fashion. Big, giant tires. Huge engine. Chop top, all the things, really nice rig. And it got away from him. He crashed. Thanks. Almost died. Totaled it. And he bought this as, you know, everybody gets sentimental. Oh, I'm going to build the truck. It's going to be better than ever. So things change, life change. And he's like, yeah, I got this truck with all this good stuff. And like, you can have it for free. So I thought, I was like, heck yeah, man, I would make a gasser out of that, right? Put it up in the air in the front. So check out those rims, Jamie. I want to give a shout out to another friend who I met at the Ridgecrest Car Show. Oh yeah, these are the ones from... Uh... I, I might be mispronouncing it, but I, I say Thames. I think it's in English as well, English vehicle. So it's a little, like a truck, but a panel truck. So these... This wheel and tire combo are from 1969. He would race it, drag race it with these in the back and some other skinny steelies in the front. And I had these spoke wheels that another fan or whatever, just somebody wanted to contribute. He's like, hey, I got these spokes from this tea bucket. I don't know why they have motorcycle knobbies on them, but like you could have them for free. So I started thinking, man, this little tiny truck. I got a big block Chevy V8, fresh, thanks Tom Taylor. It's in the container. Imagine this, big block with the pipe sticking out, nose up, four speed. It's got a good rear end in it. Look at what they did with this. Again, I can't help it. We're talking cars, right? <laughs> Whew. It's a disease. It is. If you know, you know, it's a disease. Well, today when your friends stopped by, like all of a sudden you guys were all into it around and, and the Jamie, car. She comes from a different ilk, a different path in life of professionalism. <laughs> and I get these guys showing up and they look kind of like me. Yeah, I got this thing. It's got all the stuff. And... Oh, go. that's all that? right. <laughs> I mean, it's really cool. Check it out. He's like, look at back. Look, look here. So some fellas, I guess this came out of Texas. They started, like a lot of projects go, things changed and they, they sold it to Jeff. So already it's a custom chassis, albeit pretty rusted from sitting out. I think it lived in Huntington Beach. So you know, in Huntington Beach, it gets misty most mornings. So it's a four link. It's on coilovers. I've got the coilovers. He brought, Jamie was a little interested to notice all the boxes and buckets of parts. Four link. Step chassis, it's got the Watts link set up. Definitely rudimentary mock-up stuff, but I could see it working. I, I guess this is a, uh, a Chrysler rear end. Somebody picked it. Hone in on this, Jamie. Let's get some comments. 
So it's got the small four or five on four and a half inch bolt circle. So that's what's set up in back. I mean, this is the business. The chassis looks reasonably well built. It's stepped, it's welded, it's got the gussets, or rather fish plates. No gussets, a gusset would be in here. It's got the additional support on the weld, so kind of rusty, but usable. Shadow is doing a full inspection. Yes. Come here, inspect. Looks a little rusty. I know, we're playing the gimmick. We're playing the inspection. <laughs> you said you gimmick. wouldn't do it. You can't help yourself. I couldn't help it. She's very interested. It smells exotic. It smells like the ocean. She only knows the desert. Mm hmm so, wow. Anyway, she's checking out the work. Like, this is not a backyard build. Somebody, somebody knew what they were up to. It's got, it's got a lot of the right stuff. Um, and the front suspension is primarily, when I said gasser, he's like, wait, I don't know if you should do that because check out what's going on under the front. So just like the rear, the front has got some action involved as well. So yeah, they're building out, fabbing some business, but primarily for me, he said, dude, it's got a Mustang flip under it, Mustang 2 style, tubular control arm. All this stuff is new. It's just been sitting around. Like, I don't think this is ever in service. And I said, for free? He's like, yeah, that for free. And that's where the plot twisted, because I said, I'm not really looking to build another project, man. He's like, but it's free. So I thought, you know, that Lincoln Zephyr right behind us, that could use a Mustang two front suspension. And maybe somewhere down the lane, this becomes a gasser. But we're not looking for project number five. No. We just took on dog number three. <laughs> and project number five is not in the cards right now. No. So I pulled the wheels and tires off of this. Sent it back with him. I said, we'll see what we can do with this someday. But I like it. I like it for its parts. So I think we should commence on cutting this suspension off and transferring it over to that low slung beauty. I really wanted this on airbag suspension. But seeing the way that this is set up, it looks like there's plenty of room to swap bags in because it's got a coil spring arrangement. Right now it's on these solid struts, probably just to roll it around, just a big piece of threaded rod. So the way it's set up, I could definitely slip some bags in there. No sweat. I'm going to unbolt this steering shaft and then cut this whole thing right off. Oh, look at that. Nothing's even tight. Perfect. He did say a lot of nuts and bolts were dropping off of it on the trailer on the way here. Uh, yeah, so this project, just like our other projects, it's just in a state of disarray. So you throw something like this on the trailer, and everything's shaking. So that could happen. I'm just going to get right into it with the saw. With no further ado. Or appears to be stuck. Yeah, these bolts are totally not they're totally loose. There it is. <laughs> oh. Voila. So that's what one of those looks like. The old Mustang two style suspension kit. So why is it a two style? I'm guessing it's two styles, but two styles of Mustang. Oh. It's not the Mustang. It's the Mustang 2. So the original Mustang, you know, was super, super neat. Its own entity, and then the Mustang 2. It's kind of like 
I like the way they're remaking like the Ford Bronco. It was the Bronco. Now it's mm -hmm. the Bronquette. <laughs> so the Mustang too is a lighter, lighter duty. Still a cool car if you do it right, but this style of suspension is cool because look. You could take it from that car and put it on the Zephyr. It's complete, right? Everything's here. Uh, I got boxes for the calipers, etc. But look at this stuff. It's good stuff. It's definitely, if it's not new, just sitting around, it's it's very uh, recent. So my next question is, how do you know that it will fit in there? Because, like, don't you have to measure them? I don't really understand that. I love, let me just, <clears throat> I love your questions. And you're being Where's serious. It? Huh? And you are being serious. Well, that's what this episode's about. You didn't think it was about building a gasser. No. It's about, is this going to fit in the Zephyr? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, how do you know it's going to fit? You this don't. guy I used to work with a bit, he coined the term for me. He was like, oh, no, look at this. This is good used trash. You could do something with this. Is it going to fit in there? I have no idea. But as a community together, we're going to find out today. So as a quick reply, um, the car is only this wide, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times with front suspension kits, uh, you'll be struggling when you make it much lower. And the earlier cars like this, you'll you'll be struggling to find a suspension that's narrow enough to sit inside the fender. So you got a little car, potentially could be very low. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna work out. <laughs> Making a safe bet. Look at that. What I tell you, how long has it been? Uh, a little bit. Longer than 30 seconds. Wow, I think I said 10 minutes. Oh, check this out. This is what I'm thinking about. Time, time is an illusion on time these. Uh... Illusion. Right, I want to run these 17 inch police car style rims that came off of a Crown Vic just because I like the idea of a very simple but modern look. It's going to be very low, skirted in the back, low in the front. I love the look of these Vogue tires. Oh, yeah. I mean, Vogue, right? Vogue tires. Right. So they have like a white wall with a gold pinner, a little pin. And the way it's spelled T Y R E S. I love it. If it's spelled T Y, it's got to be elegant. Tires. So, yeah, imagine the Vogue on that with this. Imagine the original cap. Oh, I think we have approval on that. Then, so we have a backer so we don't see those holes, but you just mm -hmm. have the original cap floating in the center with the, oh, I think it's going to work. That, that will be the front tire. You'll only see the fronts, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, I like it. So you'll it. have that big pronounced hub cap showing in those fenders. You are definitely, <laughs> you're definitely in the scene today. She's uh, going to be a YouTube star. Let me fill that tire. See why she's Harvey. determined. <laughs> she doesn't like the air for me. She doesn't like any tools, which is perfect. She gets out of the way. Yeah, you said I'm very passionate about today's event, and that's because we're not doing a lot of work. Sometimes you just need to get the creative juices back on key, because building cars is a grind. It's it's great. It's super fun. To arrange parts and think about things. So we're uh, having some family come into town tomorrow. So our schedule is going to be a little bit broken up over the next week. I think we have two or three in the can. Yeah, because I'm going to Hearst Castle and then I'm going to San Francisco. Hearst, not like the shifter, like the castle. If you've never checked out Hearst Castle, you must look at it online. It is incredible. And we're doing... All three tours tour in that place all day long. I can't wait. Like something like this would have been parked in front of the Hearst Castle. I'm sure. I mean, the Roussels could have shown up for a dinner party. So look at the cross number here. 
So you can, like, if you're just familiar, you know, with the skeletal system, right? You got this cross member, which is very dipped down. And that one is as well. But can you see the difference in the arrangement from the antique stuff to the modern? Mm hmm. I just love on this. Can I just geek out for a minute? I love this yeah. on the car. Like, it's so rad. I yeah, this car is so beautiful. I never in a million years thought we would have a Lincoln Zephyr. Same here. Kind of <laughs> un unobtainium is what it's called. You can get them, but they're hard to find. How's that for a fit up? So I'm just looking down through these holes, just trying to get an idea of the actual width. And that is very narrow. Very narrow. The front clip on this is more more narrow. I'm going to introduce a term that you may not be familiar with. Ready? The track width. Mm -hmm. Looking at the front of the car, how wide are the tires? That's the track width. So I'm going to stick a tire on this and just take a look. Because the offset of the wheel, of the rim, uh, the width of the suspension components, all of these things add up to the track width. And uh, with modern stuff, supplies, etc., like I'm doing with the back, you can get any amount of wheel spacers to accommodate that. It's not the best way. But if you're working with kind of spare parts like this, with the rear axle, that's the solution for me. I'm having to get one inch wheel spacers. The Crown Vic, the wheels are very, very much, what is it, a negative offset or positive? Somebody can fill us in on that. But like a lot of the rims I like, they're not deep dish. They're faced off right here. There's no offset in that direction. It's on the inside. So a spacer may be appropriate. If I end up using these wheels, if, if they don't work with this setup, then I'm gonna find a different unit to put in there. I'm gonna lower this into position and see what happens. Flat tire. <laughs> Shocking. Just listen to it. Exhale. <laughs> I could hear the air coming out of the back one too. I thought it was a snake for a second. So this is really narrow. Look at this. Our arm is in here. Let's move this car over a little bit. Yeah, we might be in the market for some different rims. This is how I've always done it. Just like put some stuff together and see what sticks. So this is going to work or no? Oh yes, the good news, the last thing you want is it being way too wide because then you end up doing some weird fender flares. I don't really like that look unless it's on like the funky 70s style. So for a classic look in a very low car, this is gonna work out awesome. But we're gonna have to cut the whole chassis, set this front clip in place. All the things. But that's what it's all about, at least for me. So another good news is uh, there's lots of room with these larger diameter tires. I don't know. I'm going to think about it. Spacers may be appropriate to get this out. Uh, this is plenty narrow to fit under here. That's awesome news. See what this looks like. Settle down. So in a perfect world, I'd be looking to get that tire 
somewhere in that value range. Just put a stand under it and get this even lower. I'm gonna want this to be able to steer and have some suspension, you know, movability with these large tires. I think they'll be a little lower profile in the end, but they're pretty wide. So you'll see I'm gonna run out of room real quick once it drops. And on air suspension, as it's setting down, oh, doesn't that look cool? <laughs> it really does. Right? Yeah. Come on. You're just, today you're just really, today you're in your car heaven. And then with these big, luxurious hubcaps showing out. Love. Back. Yeah. Come on. Gonna throw the hood on just for some reference. <laughs> they say all work and no play makes one a dull guy. But now you have to put the grill on it. I don't want to mess with that. It's very fragile. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I would love to put the grill on, but uh, you'll see things start falling down when you stack this this hard. I'm just saying this stance, right? on the boulevard that's what's up mm -hmm. pretty cool if you just stand back and take that all in it's like a classic look but everything underneath is modern and that's really where i'm hoping to end up with this you know original hubcaps kind of a disguise of what's going on underneath i think those tires are pretty expensive i'm gonna have to save my lunch money so yeah, we're going to put that Morris truck in the archives and carry on with the Mustang 2 and the Zephyr project. It's a great unit. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff.